Hello, everyone. So today we're going to be talking about open search, Python, and serverless. My name is Laiza Oshoa. Today I'll be joined by Yulia Barabash. We both, both work at North Cloud. We are both located in Munich, which is currently snowing a lot here. And we're going to be talking about open search with you today. So let's dive in. So what are databases? So databases are used for store, manage, and retrieve data. We have a lot of data, different kind of data in this world. That's why we have so many databases. And that's why we have so many types of databases. So there are graphical databases, there are key values databases, there are relational databases, document database, and so on and so forth. If we take a look about a real scenario of using database, that could be something like uh, we have experience. So we had a DynamoDB database that is a NoSQL database, key value database that we use to send the data from application by triggering a WS Lambda function. And we send us data uh, to the DynamoDB. So at DynamoDB, we also fetch this data. But at some point, our client wanted to have search capabilities. So our client wanted to be able to search across all fields and across all documents. And maybe DynamoDB has a key value database. It's not the best choice for that. So this is, could be frustrating to have it uh, using DynamoDB. So we need something that actually has search power and can help us in this mission. But it does not mean that we need to replace DynamoDB. We can still use in DynamoDB as a source of truth. And also because we don't want to change all the architecture to just uh, have the new feature, the search uh, feature. So in this case scenario, it would be great if we can add something new. In this case, we choose to add OpenSearch. OpenSearch is an open source database, and it's a search engine as well. And you can use in this scenario. So instead of uh, uh, when we send the data for, to DynamoDB, we would then trigger AWS Lambda functions to send this data to OpenSearch. And for the API, we can also trigger Lambda functions to fetch this data, and so on and so forth. This would be great and it would make our client happy and also our user experience would be improved because open search solves search problems. But what kind of search problems does open search solves? Open search solves. <laughs> so we live in a beautiful world where people are talking different languages. I am a polyglot myself, so this is a nice feature to have. The thing is with human language way. Uh, for example, uh, languages like German language, uh, there is a use of compound, composed words where two words become one word. And this is maybe different in other languages, like in Portuguese, this is not so common. So the way that you would index data from, from, search, from different languages can be different because uh, the way that also you query this data. So you have to think how the language works. And for that, OpenSearch has such a feature called multilingual. So you can actually choose which language you are being indexing your data and OpenSearch will make sure that uh, relevant results will be brought for you on this language. Another great capability of OpenSearch is that, uh, for example, we, when we are typing, we make mistakes. We are not a robot and we make mistakes and could be that there is a typo. It does not mean that your open search cannot understand you. It's like a human language as well. Even though I can make some a mistake while I'm talking, you are still going to get the message. And open search is able to do that by having false searching. So even if you type something wrong, you're still going to get results. This is quite excellent for a user experience. Another cool thing is that OpenSearch can read your mind. So you start to type in and OpenSearch will look into the data. You will look into the relevant fields and try to uh, autocomplete what you are thinking, what you are typing. And this is quite nice feature. Actually, today you are lucky because you're going to learn how you can implement auto-completion. 
So it's a cool feature that you have with OpenSearch. Another one is that if you are coming from a relational uh, database that uh, requires a schema, you are quite like um, restrict on that. You need to have a schema, you need to declare your, your types and so on and so forth. But with OpenSearch, you can just send your data and OpenSearch will figure out through dynamic mapping. And of course, if you know how your data is, you don't need to do that. You can, <laughs> you are sure about your data. You can just specify your data types. That would be also uh, nice. So this is cool. We have all these features that OpenSearch have: multilingual, fuzzy searching, auto completion, dynamic mapping, and more that I did not introduce here. But just for you to know how powerful is search. Uh, open search and how powerful open search is in the context of search. But now we're going to talk about autocompletion with Yulia Barabash. She will introduce this topic for you. So thank you, Liza, for your part. And now let's dive, dive into more the uh, practical part. And we will start with autocompletion and how we basically can implement this. So let's assume we want to create application application where you want to search for example for movie what kind of movie you want to watch this night and uh, for this we want to implement after completion basically uh, here you can see the uh, demo where you type hari and application give you some exa uh, some uh, examples so how it can be implemented this four different types how it can be implemented but we just focus on three of them the first one is prefix matching uh, it's one of the easiest one because for this you don't need to create additional index you don't need to create uh, to do some kind of the index temp uh, mapping basically you even can reuse the existing one and for this you basically what you need to create a query what is it will just search for uh, prefix for this you define the client client that communicate with open search after that you define your body query inside your query you define okay i want to match the prefix with the title hurry nice and this will give you res uh, results where the title will have um, ha prefix hurry and later in the demo, you can see this. The next one is more complicated one. It's called complete suggester. With complete suggester, you can implement in the way that you need to define a type for your field. For example, for title, we want to define the you need to define the field completion. And after that, open search with create in memory tree where uh, field will be uh, present as a tree and it will look like this for example and during search if you search for hari open search will traverse the tree and will start with the first letter h as root after that it will go to a and after that will go to r after, at the end it will just analyze the rest of the notes and return some results it's very efficient way and i think the fastest way because you basically what you do open search just uh, traverse the tree and return results and for this you need to create the type of the query suggest you need to define the name of the query suggest title because you can have a few suggestions and then you define the prefix uh, hurry and the name of the uh, field that you want to query great and the latest, the last one is the search as you type. With a search as you type, what you do, uh, you also define type for your field, search as you type, and open search will create some hidden fields, some sub sub fields for your uh, for your field. For example, we define a field for a type as you search and open search during indexing processing it and we'll keep in the memory this processed uh, information for example for title it will just for a regional field title it will split words 
and will keep the uh, words as the array of strings. And additionally, it cre create different engrams and keep in the also as memory. And during search, it will match again these subfields and original field and will return the best result. <clears throat> How you basically can use it. For this, you also need to define the query. And inside the query, you can use one of the uh, multi-match queries where you just specify the query, what you want to search for it. You also need to define the prefix. And at the end, you can uh, define what of the fields you need to use. And also, you need to define as also this field that was created by OpenSearch. So during query, it will match against these fields. Great. Now let's talk about our demo. And for demo, as I mentioned, we create a simple application. And let's assume we want to search for movie, but I don't remember the name, for example, the proper name of the movie. I just remember that it has worked hard. And we can see with the prefix match, we match against our index and we return all fields where there's word hurry. But um, maybe I don't know the uh, proper spelling of the hurry. And I spell like hurry. And you can see that in this case, I, can, I don't get any results. So to be sure that your user will get some results, we can implement more powerful search, for example, completion suggestion. Well, completion suggests and understand that people do mistakes and even person do, do not do proper spelling, it still returns some results. For example, maybe it can be Harry is snowman or Harry the, the sky, uh, sky. And in this way, people still will get some results and they can still select them. Okay, great. And this all was for our demo. And if we do some kind of conclusion, uh, how open search works, we can uh, tell that open search is very powerful because it has different integration with AWS services. Open also is possible to have serverless open search where the AWS can take responsibility for operational overhead. Also, it's very scalable. Additionally, you can do performance optimization. It can be very fast. And open search also great for data analysis and for aggregation. Great. And the final and most the best uh, suggestion if you want to do search is the best to use open search. And thank you for your attention.